All right, so we are back, and I know everyone's excited. It's fight week for Jake Paul and Tyrone Woodley, the rematch. We have a special, special interview for today, but before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Drop me a comment down below on what you think of this, because today, we didn't hold anything back. We brought in the big guns, metaphorically and literally. Mans is jacked, and he's also a former championship-level, elite-level fighter, now turned the head coach of the problem child himself. I couldn't kick off fight week any other way than to give you guys a one-on-one -on -one interview with the man himself. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a fight week sit down with BJ Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, it's fight week. And I know it's not the fight week that we expected, but it's damn better the one we're getting. And folks, I would be remiss if I didn't bring in coach legendary, the man himself, BJ Flores is here to do an interview with us. BJ, what is up, my man? What's up, boy? Thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Of course, of course, man. Listen, first off, I don't know why you had to come in and flex on me with the half sleeve. I, I don't want muscles like that, and you just out here <laughs> popping them out, big dog. Come on now. <laughs> oh, man, sorry about that's that. The, hey, listen, that's that work that you guys have been putting in in camp, and speaking of that, I mean, obviously, you know, the things that have surrounded this fight week, it's been wild. Give me your thoughts on what's going on. Obviously, we had the, the the fight with Tommy, and that's falling through. We're not even gonna worry about that fight, but now we have the rematch with Tyron Woodley. It is a massive fight. In my opinion, it's a harder fight, and I think you would agree with me. Talk to me about what's going on in camp right now, the thoughts you guys have, and just getting prepared for this rematch. Yeah, I think Tyron's a, a definitely a tougher opponent than Tommy, no question about it. Um, yeah. Tyron's game, he's experienced, he's more explosive, he's more powerful in a lot of areas. If you, if you look at the, at the, at the stat sheet, if you look at, if you break it down, like, like power numbers, Tyron's a better opponent than Tommy. Um, he, he's just been in with a lot better guys. It's a lot different type of challenge, but, um, you know, we've been able to flip the script. We've been able to switch it around and focus on what we got to do to beat Tyron. Uh, we don't really talk about Tommy at all. Um, yeah. You know, whatever the reason, no reason was, to. why he wasn't able to fight, it, it is what it is, but Jake's, Jake's, Jake's got a big chip on his shoulder from the last Tyron fight. He does. He's been working very hard. And instead of, you know, going out and celebrating the money or whatever else he made on the last fight and all the people congratulating him, he got right back at the gym and he started working hard. And we switched a couple things up. He'll come in lighter for this fight. He'll come in quicker for this fight. He'll come in more aggressive. His, his output and his pace will be faster. And we can still box and move the whole fight, but it's going to be a lot different version of Jake Paul. So I'm really excited about it. And Jake just can't wait to get in there. It doesn't matter against him. Yeah, yeah, man. Listen, I know we in our last interview, you know, we talked about your guys' mantra, any one, any time, any place, right? And you guys are living it, man. I, I think people are not giving, you know, you guys and Tyron the credit that you deserve for for making this fight happen. Jake could have easily pushed this card back, and it speaks to your guys' mentality, the team's mentality, his mentality. Say what you will about Jake Paul, that mother <laughs> – well, fuck it, I'll say it. That mother will fight anyone, anytime, any place, and – it's, it shows right here with this, and no one can say anymore that he's not a boxer, that he's not a fighter. This dude is is primed for a fight, and he took it on short notice. Fair play to him. But what I wanted to do, uh, BJ, since you know we were talking about you know this fight, and and let's let's take one step back and talk about the first fight. You know, um, you guys did what you had to do. You got the W. You went out there and you won the fight. And I wanted to get your thoughts on Jake's performance in that first fight and what you guys want to look at to improve for the second one. A lot of things, uh, something very important that people don't know about the first fight is uh, no excuses. Tyron fought a great mm -hmm. fight. Jake had a badly, badly hyperextended left elbow going into the fight. We didn't work pads really all week. He was getting treatment two and three times a day on his elbow. We were unfortunately very close to almost having to, you know, pull out of that fight because, yeah. you know, he, Jake could not extend his left hand at all. And it was a massive problem. And, uh, you know, Jake's just a tough, a mentally tough kid. And he refused yeah. to say, you know, anything on the outside. He wasn't going to let anything beat him. And uh, I told him the week of the fight, I was like, look, by Thursday or Friday, Jake, if this thing isn't, you know, at least 70 or 80 percent, then we're going to have to have a sit down and have a serious talk about what we're going to do this Saturday because or this Sunday. Right. And uh, he just refused to let that enter his mind. The fight could possibly be pushed back. He refused. And, uh, yeah. you know, Jake's fought with a broken nose before. Um, the last fight, he had a badly, badly hyperextended left elbow. I mean, he couldn't even do a push up. I mean, it was bad. Yeah. And uh, he just, he's just a mentally tough kid. I mean, he's, he's a Navy SEAL in a former life. He really was. And uh, he right. just, uh, you know, he, he's really, he, he's really ready to go to war. And he doesn't matter what the condition, doesn't matter what the circumstances, or the conditions are, he's ready. And uh, you yeah. just got to respect that out of a kid. So I think this fight is going to be a lot different. Like I said, Jake's got a big chip on his shoulder after the last fight. 
I'm glad he got taken eight rounds. I'm glad we got to do that. I'm glad he got to see some of the things that happened in a real fight with a real guy. I'm glad he got to see that. And uh, he came back to camp a week later with a massive chip on his shoulder, ready to get to work. And we made a lot of adjustments and a lot of improvements. And uh, I can't wait to see those. Uh, Jake's very, very anxious to, to get out there and fight anybody on the other side. He doesn't care. And uh, th this fight's going to be a lot different. And uh, you'll see when you tune in, but this fight's going to be a lot different. Yeah, you know, you spoke to – and you know what's funny? When when you guys were going into the Ben Askren fight, and I don't know, this could just be me reading into things too much. I had seen a video of Jake, you know, hitting pads with you, and I would seen him continually stretching out that lead hand, even with the glove on, continually stretching it out. And I thought to myself, because I've had problems with my bicep and, and hyperextending my elbows too, and I was like, it looks like something's going on with his elbow. And I'd set it in a video, and I just kind of let it – pass and then it came back up in the tyrant fight and i was like man okay yeah something's definitely up with that you could just tell that the shots weren't turning over like you would see him turn over the, the the lead hand before but what i wanted to talk about and something you kind of alluded to is you guys have been working hard in camp we know this you guys have been in camp for what three months now three plus months yeah i got here um i got here september 10th i've okay. been here three months yeah. already now we need to tamp on sunday so and he was yes. already in shape when he got to camp. He wasn't out of shape. He was in good shape. Which is good. Which is so good. we just really mm. we really focused this camp on increasing and improving his strength and conditioning, his stamina, his power, his speed, his explosion. Um, we brought in a new a new strength and conditioning coach, and we've got a we're we're rolling, man. This is this is yes. great. Uh, we still work with with the other one as well, and he still helps out. But we got another guy who's who's increasing our level of fitness and our strength and our power even better. Um, yeah. We got a dietitian for Jake as well to make sure his eating is perfect to make sure there's nothing extra, you know, in his diet that, that's going to take away from his performance. We really dialed that in this camp. We got his uh, blood levels tested and checked everything to make sure what foods respond well with his body and his blood type. We did it all just to make sure that <laughs> we lined everything up perfectly to make sure he's ready to go out there and perform. And uh, we've got it dialed in. He's sparred eight rounds probably six or seven times already in this camp, rotating sparring partners in. He could go 10 right now. He really can. He's ready to go. And uh, he, he can't wait to get going. This is his fourth pay-per-view fight. In 12, in 12 and a half months, and that's massive. The numbers he's putting up, only Canelo's putting up those kind of numbers in, in four fights, and it's, uh, it's, it's really remarkable. I can't disagree, man. He, he is carrying his weight in this game right now, absolutely. He's active. He's not only active, but he's doing so consistently throughout the months. He's not just active a month, come back six, seven months later, active again. He is continuing in camp to get back in there, and to that effect, you talked about the dietitian. You talked about the strength and conditioning. You put out on Instagram, I think it was yesterday, an ability for Jake to continue to work at this level, even 12 days out, doing these squat hang clean presses, these combine circuits, even you on the bags, you know, you hitting the speed back and going after it. You guys are just continually in there. It's like you don't, you guys have energy for days. And I think that, again, just attests to how seriously you guys are taking not only Jake's career, but this fight as well. Like Jake, you know, People wanted to say in the in the first fight that Jake might have struggled with his cardio, and if that was a struggle, you guys have addressed it from the looks of it. Uh, oh, yeah. Speak to me just about the the work that's been put in there, and just again coming into this second fight, what you look to take advantage of. We talked about it before, like our worth, our 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 motto in camp is we won't be outworked. Um, yeah. A good word to describe Jake would be relentless. He really is. He doesn't stop. He's like a shark. He's always going. He's always trying to you mm -hmm. know get better, improve. And uh, I mean, you just you just got to wake up every day and be, be grateful. You got to you got an athlete like that who, who you get an opportunity to train. It, it doesn't come along very often. You know, I, I would yeah. I would hope, honestly, like I hope when I have kids one day that my son has the same type of work ethic that Jake Paul has. And I, yeah. I, that's not something you would never say that about somebody who you didn't really admire. You know what I mean? And the kid just really, really works. He just he's built different. He really is. And mm -hmm. uh, you can't you can you can say whatever you want about him. I don't care. It doesn't matter um whatever you his work ethic is amazing and if, if we want to talk about that then we've got to talk about the boxing bullies we've got to take about yeah. we've got to talk about the kids that all over puerto rico that he buys free equipment for and sends all the puerto rican national team on all their boxing trips we've got to talk about the thousands of pieces of equipment he's donated all over puerto rico the gyms he's upgraded all over in la perla here in dorado all the all these different things he's done to give back to this community and build it up and making places around him better instead of anything else so he's just right. he's a builder he's a he's a he's a ceo mindset and he's really just uh he's on another level right now he's really focused so i just i couldn't be more proud of the kid yeah no listen i you know even and i think some of that has to go and a lot of that i think has to go to you since he's gotten around you bj in that camp and the the, the right people around him we talked about this last interview 
yeah. things have changed. Things have absolutely changed for him in, in the best way possible. Like you said, he is CEO mindset, leader. You guys, I think, have honed him into a, a place where he is a giver. He is someone that now is pushing oh, out yeah. the boxing bullies and, and oh, yeah. reaching out into different areas. And it's not just about Jake anymore, right? So yeah. even – and you can even say that for the boxers on this card. I saw J. Leon Love is now on this card. I, yes. Anthony Taylor is on this yes. card, you know. Yes. They're, they're, and Amanda uh, Serrano is on this yes. card. You know, there there are people that he is now responsible for, not only just him training, but staying on this card so those people get paid. So fair play to you guys, man. Wait, you know, the first um, thing he said when they were like, hey, uh, you know, Tommy Fury's out, the first thing Jake said, he goes, what about the undercard fighters? Yeah. He's not even thinking about him. You know what I mean? That's what he's thinking yeah. about. He's like, I can't, so we got to find someone. Otherwise, everyone on the undercard won't be able to fight. I got to, you know, that was his That's, mindset. And that's, that's unbelievable. You know what I mean? So yeah. that, that, and Amanda Serrano, the post she put on her story the other day, Hey, I just bought my dream car. I just <laughs> did, you know, and I just, I, I'm so happy. And thank you to most valuable promotions. And thank you to Jake Paul. I mean, look, Amanda's a spectacular fighter and a great fighter. And it's just a shame. She never had an opportunity to earn the money she should have earned. And now she finally can. And Jake has given her that vehicle to, you know, really go out there and, and get what she deserves. And, you know, kudos to Amanda for staying consistent and never having a cell phone her entire life. That's how dedicated she is. Crazy. She's so focused in, in her boxing career. And, and, and this is what happens. Like I said it yesterday, like the grind will recognize and the grind will, will give you a reward for what you work for. And it will never give you something you haven't worked for. And Amanda Serrano is a testament to that. She really is. She's grinded her entire life and she's never had the, the type of life she wanted. And now she's finally having it and she's getting the things she always wanted. And it's because her and Jake came together at the right time and just Jake's been doing his thing and she's been doing her thing. And it's just, it's incredible. It's just great to be a part of it all. It really is. It's a blessing. Insane, man. Insane. So we do have th this rematch coming up, right? Yes. You guys definitely saw things in Tyron in that first fight that, that gave you a reason to say, okay, in this second fight, now we can get even better. Now there's things that we can do to potentially, and what Jake is, has basically put a $500,000 bounty on his own head to say, hey, come and knock me out if you can. Like, there's no lack of confidence there. What are you guys seeing in this rematch that, that you really like or, you know, that you can tell me, obviously? And uh, and going into this thing, what what prediction do you got? I mean, I just think that, you know, why would you put a $500,000 bounty on your own head unless you just <laughs> wanted to give the fans the very best fight possible? Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's what Jake does. He wants to give the fans the best fight possible. And you just got to respect that. Who, who does that? That's out of his own money to do that. <laughs> who does that? Nobody is giving away money in this sport and this business. And Jake Paul is a, a, a breath of fresh air because he's incentivizing people all over to perform better, which in turn yeah. gives back to the crowd and gives back to people and the fans watching the event. What we saw in this first fight that we could take advantage of in the rematch is a couple things. We had zero film or zero tape of Tyron in the first fight. Nothing. Yep. We had nothing to go off of. Now I have eight rounds to see what he does. I have eight rounds to see what his tendencies are, his habits are. And, you know, it, 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 I watched that fight after the first fight probably about 10 to 15 times and saw a lot of things that I wish I could have possibly known before the first fight, but it, I couldn't. There was no mm -hmm. footage on him. We had no idea what he was going to do, and now we have that. So we take all that, we compute it, we draw it up and see what makes sense in the big scheme of things, and we work on those things. And, um, you know, like I said, kudos to Tyron for taking this fight. Very difficult to do. Tyron saved the show. Thank you for doing yeah. that. We appreciate it. You really did. It takes balls. It really does. Um, not mm -hmm. a lot of guys are willing to get in the ring um, with Jake uh, on, on, on 12 days notice. Uh, they really aren't. And uh, yeah. they, unless you get to the higher level guys, and they will, because they'll look at it as, as something, as an opportunity. But got, like most guys don't want to get in with Jake um, after 12 day, on a 12-day notice. And Tyron is stepping up. He's doing what he's got to do. But there's a lot of things we're going to take advantage of. And you'll see it in the very first round. I'm not going to say what they are, but Jake's course, increased, his, his power, his speed, his stamina is off the chart, and we're just ready to go to war for as long as the fight lasts, and we'll see, we'll see how long that is. Yeah, it, it's something I really took to that you said, and we'll get you out of here with this last prediction from you, yeah. DJ. You, you, know, you said that Jake's going to come in loud, lighter. I found that very interesting. I do want to see you know, him not only lighter, more active. I want to see him sitting down on shots that maybe we didn't necessarily get to see in the first fight, and that's something, again, you know, we'll see how the fight plays out. But... Right. As we get you out of here, man, like I said, I appreciate the interview. You guys are in fight camp, fight week coming up. What's the prediction for this fight, man? If you had to say, what happens? When does Jake put him away? Is it a decision? What is BJ Flores' prediction for this fight? I predict 100% a win. I know Jake will win the fight. There's only one outcome that will happen in this fight. Jake will win the fight. I don't know mm -hmm. which round the knockout will come. I suspect it'll come for sure. But if it's a decision again, I'm very happy with that. 
It doesn't matter to yep. me. Um, a win's a win to me. I just want Jake to look sharp, tighten up the areas that we were deficient in in the first fight, tighten some things up. And now that he's been eight rounds before, he's got all that experience that he didn't have before. It's completely yep. changed his mindset, completely. And, and sometimes you need a fight like that. In, in, in this case, he needed that to really wake him up. And we've had Steve Cunningham in camp, two-time world champion. Yeah. You know, we've had Moose and Kaysen in camp, who's part of KSI. We've had, um, you know, Richard <laughs> yeah. Rivera, 20 and 0. We've had him in camp. We've had, uh, you know, Kevin Newman, 16 and 3, him in camp. We've got Linnell Bellows in camp. We've got Deshaun Webster, 13 and 2, him in camp. We've had, six, we've had five of the top 10 cruiserweights in America all in camp for this fight. And yeah. we got that we got that Kronk style mentality where we believe in hard sparring. We believe in that. Yeah. And uh, there's there's no soft touches. So um, Jake's 100 percent ready. We're ready to go, man. My prediction is Jake will win, knock out. I'm not sure which round, but it doesn't matter to me because if it does, I'm not. We're not in a rush at all. It will come. Yes, sir. There it is, folks. BJ Flores again. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks, man. Have a great fight week. Yep. Good luck to you guys. I'm going to be watching with stained eyes, ready for this fight. <laughs> Listen, I told people this. This is not even just you know blowing smoke. I told people this as soon as we heard the news. I am so much more excited for this fight. Something about a rematch. Something about that familiarity between the two fighters going in after eight rounds of being in there yes. with each other. There's a, a competitive edge. There's a heightened sense of what the danger is here. Oh yeah. And uh, you know it always makes for a great fight. So thanks, man. I appreciate it. Good luck to you guys. All right, guys. Thanks so much, man. Take care. All right, so there you have it. Again, thank you to BJ for coming on the show. I really appreciated uh, everything that he gave us insight on. And fair play to Jake and Tyron, both guys stepping in on 12 days notice and, and taking this fight. It's going to be a fun one, and I still think it's a very close fight. You heard BJ say, I don't know what round, I don't know how, but we are getting this win. They know this is a dog fight. Two guys that really want this. Jake Paul wants to get that KO. Tyron Woodley wants vengeance. But the questions I have as we leave off, what did you guys think of this interview? Do you guys agree with BJ's assessment of the first fight? And who do you think wins this fight? We don't have those answers yet, but it is fight week. And we're less than seven days away, so I guess we'll find out.